Hey guys, what's up? The Chipto Fan here. I'm going to be playing Zerg Wars. Zerg Wars is a game on the arcade where basically four players on this side, four players on this side, and you're kind of defending against um, you know, these horde of AI that come. But you can also do offensive things to attack the other side, and it kind of depends on what race you're playing. Um, so basically, in the beginning, the best income you can get is to kill all these zerglings. But if your teammates are killing all these zerglings, then you can actually have like mineral income here. So this will increase my passive mineral income by one. We're already killing all the zerglings, so it's not like if I have more army, more zerglings will be spawned. So that's why I'm doing eco right here. But if we were not killing everything, I would get more eco just to build an army. And you don't ever want to lose units in this game. And pretty much as any class or any race, you can play in such a manner that you'll never lose any units until late game. Looks like I'll be the bunker guy. We don't have a manx or anything like that. There's a lot of different races in this game. There's Terran, Protoss, Zerg, Taldarim, which is this guy. There's a Kerrigan over here. Um, there's a Nova somewhere over here. Maybe not on our team. And then there's Mobius. Terran's more about bunkers usually, but you also have like airs that you could do like Liberators. Um, Protoss is usually about like cannons blink stalkers and like um just basically using your shield so you don't die and they have like a mega building ton of upgrades and stuff they can do zerg is pretty offensive they auto spawn units to attack the other side Taldarim has this main hero and then he'll create six gateways that auto send on this lane you can't control them um Nova and Kerrigan are similar in that they have a hero, but they have different units. You know, more in line with like co-op versions. And Mobius is more of a support. Like he can do like Vortex and he can send like big hybrids to the enemy. But he's used a lot of this game is like it's very easy to defend these passive waves, and that is not the problem at all. The problem is when they send like huge units and you have to defend that. So having like a Mobius for Vortex is super useful. Even if their kill count doesn't represent it. Let's see, like he is at 169. But that doesn't mean like if he's able to kill all the big units, what the hell? Yeah, sometimes like there will be events like that where ultras will respawn. I used to play this map a lot more when it was a way different map. Um let's kill some of this stuff. Cause you can actually like just lose sometimes of this. I don't think we're gonna have any issues here, especially with these free turrets. If this came a little bit later, it's possible. I'll have one damage. Two. Okay. Half here, half here. Maybe I'll add two medics each side. I only need one each side, but at least with two, the medics can heal each other. Looks like I haven't really seen much of that. I've never seen like a uh, Manx go, stuff like that. The turrets. I feel like we're having a little, like the units are getting further than they should and I'm starting to lose Marines. So I'm gonna get damage upgrades. Oh, and I tried to kill him. Uh, I don't know if that's worth it. On one hand, yeah, he did get a lot of kills there. But, um... We, we got like 350 feet or something like that for killing it. And I only lost... How much do my marines cost? 15 each. So he has to kill like 20 just to kill 300 worth.
And he spent all that time coming to this side. But, um... I might want to start bunkering up. I'm just going to balance income with army production. There's also upgrades on the units, like for example, combat shields here, stem here, elite marines here. I'm mostly going to be going for elite marines and bunkers shut, and then I'm going to upgrade it. So like for example, here's a tab, it looks different for different races, but I can activate the Terran base. So the random turrets, like if they die here, they'll be respawned. And then Terran has like the unique feature of being able to add more AI turrets. Other classes will like spawn a swarm of units or stuff like that. And then you can increase the range and damage and life of the turrets. Okay, yeah, I need to add more army. This game is a lot more 1v4 able because uh, if you're the only one defending, then you get more money from all the defense. And then you can, like, you can be more efficient with your upgrades because you don't have four people going for upgrades. You have um, you know, all, all of them stacked at one person. Uh, that's not good. Um, I was like one Marine. I'm not going to do that. All right, let's see. Miss micro there. I kind of want to push this Alarak to be on hold position here or something like that. So a little tank. He gets, every time a unit dies, he gets life and shields, but he's already full health. So he's not really using it to its full strength. I really wish I had prior to move him. Like I can upgrade my bunker a little bit, like two range, armor. I'm not gonna do too much upgrades right now. I need to finish my income upgrades. Oh my God. Okay, it wasn't him. I was wondering if like he just randomly heard my prayers. Okay, there we go. That's a good starting point. Um. Like, the enemy could kill these rocks, so they come down into middle. It's not that big of an advantage, but sometimes, like, the defense will actually kill the rocks just because it's going through middle. There's pros and cons to wherever you do. Ooh. I'm just going to get all these upgrades eventually, so it doesn't really matter. Where is this SCV? Oh. He's gotta heal this before he makes the bunker. Sounds like that bunker's never being made. Uh, late game, I wanna be having uh, science vessels. Let's finish my upgrades. So I'm, I've mostly just been ecoing. Uh, let's see if I can get stem.
I can patrol these SUVs for pairing. And I'm done with income. Probably spent too much time on income, but who cares? Now that I'm done, I'll finish my upgrades and start massing. That doesn't die. I could also get the Marie. All right. I pretty much got all the main upgrades. No, I didn't. Did they have a Kerrigan? I should have been sniping this stuff here. It's good to always push in occasionally. He should be sniping this Midas Worm now with his hero. So we'll do something like here, here. Yeah. Oh, I built on the wrong side apparently first. So I get mid of that. No, okay. See, so I'm just going towards my tuner supply. Nothing too exciting. Looks like they're not breaking this. So, a more split up strategy will work. I think I need more here. Let's make sure I have these upgrades. Oh, I didn't even have repair instructors yet. Kind of an expensive shot, but it's worth it in the end. It's got a few more of these, to be honest. One here, one here, one here. All right, that should be good there. Get my last upgrade. I'll activate the turn based on when I did that. I'm just trying to get all my units in bunkers right now. Let's not cap out. That's good.
These also help allies out a lot too. So if your teammates has a, a, have a bunch of bunkers, you could just create science vessels and get more of an eco style. So it kind of hurts my income to go income, which is kind of funny, but it in increases the total income. Oh my God, my mic was near my ear this whole time. So hopefully I wasn't too quiet. Usually when I'm quiet, it's just because of OBS. Not recording my voice very loud for some reason. I'm gonna patrol these because I have no idea where they'll even be useful. Alright, so I can get Elite Marine upgrade here. Pretty huge difference in damage. Unfortunately, I forgot to show the damage beforehand, but they were kind of like a normal Marine. You can kind of tell that's better. And their HP goes up too. And then I'm gonna start activating like. So this will increase the amount of AI, like it'll create these little mules and they'll start building up the whole base. Which is just good because they can't really poke us down. They actually have two heroes that are really good at poking. They have the Nova. So this is our Mobius teammate. I talked about how the huge, they have huge hybrids and they can do stuff like this. But yeah, Kerrigan and Nova can go to our side and start harassing whenever they want. So being able to prevent that is always a good thing. This always looks, this war prism always makes this bunker look not full. Okay, anyways, I'll continue with uh, like increase the planetary corners. So like you could see like we start out with only like these two devastation turrets, one up here, one up here, one up here and one here. So after this is all done, you'll see how much reinforcement this adds. It'll stop. A lot of the poke. I never. I forgot to check this this whole time. Okay, he's not even going for it. Or our teammate stopped it. Yeah, see, like, so we have poke here. They're only gonna kill. I mean, this is just the AI, but you'll see the power soon. Not really. The most awkward thing is when you lose all your supply depots and you have no way of like making a probe or SCV. I'll actually build on their side now. Here we go. I never remember exactly where this is, so I can do something like this. Oh, that's annoying. Am I losing science vessels because of that? No, probably not. Might be overreacting a little bit. And if they ever go super heavy on harass or anything, I can increase range armor damage life. And that will solve any issues I'm having. Actually, it's probably good to overbuild a little bit on supply depots because they're so cheap. I don't want to get into any. Oh, I forgot to make these. Slow. So, for example, I can make that here. These are super useful, so I should have made them way earlier. They basically slow down nearby Zergs. Oh. Looks like there's just this plus two range upgrade I need to get. So part of upgrading, you can upgrade Zerg armor and everything, which is not something I did, but someone else on our team did. Um, and then you can like send Leviathans and stuff like that. So late game, you end up getting like Leviathan upgrades or Apocalypse upgrades and then mass sending Apocalypse or Leviathans, 
Looks like they're attacking here, but it doesn't look like it's any issue. One thing that can be really useful is like, like there's a huge minion here, for example, and having someone that can go in the back line and pick things off is really, can be really helpful too. Now I'm kind of just stockpiling minerals for a big push later on. But you can see like these turrets are pretty useful. We add more turrets in here, more stuff here, stuff here, stuff here. I think more stuff ends up getting sent here too. When they say reinforce the base north, I don't know where that is. It might be up here. They have a solid defense. I think we have a way stronger defense. So there's like some big minion here, I think. I don't know. These things look scary because they're big colossi. But they do 33 damage every 8 seconds. Oh, it's actually times 4. Never mind, they do more damage than I think. But it's not too bad. My science vessels also help this other Terran player out. It helps us Mobius out. They're super strong. So for example, like because they don't have anyone who can push creep, this is gonna stay alive and constantly attack the enemy. Am I forgetting anything? Let me think. Because this game did change a lot. Like I think the side disruptors are relatively new. As in the past few years. Oh, these don't cost supplies, so you can also mass them. Oh, I should build sensor towers. That's a thing. That will help a lot. I can do things like add, especially because now my stuff isn't being, um, like I don't need SCVs. I don't need space for SCVs. I can mass my buildings better and the science vessels can heal the buildings. Let's add some, it's not too important. Yeah, I was hoping that wouldn't happen. So when you're choosing, like, should you send Leviathans or Apocalypse, you usually want to look at the enemy comp. If they have things that can easily deal with Leviathans, for example, a Manx spamming his Sky Furies, that's a reason to not go Leviathans. I think Mass Tempest could probably deal with it, but he's going Void Rays, which would die to it. That, I think that's our mix, to be honest. It looks scary though. And yeah, hopefully you, you guys should check out this game if it looks interesting to you. There's a ton of different races. And yeah, GG's. See you guys in the next video.